makes the things more complicated for us and our lives as students of English literature and as teachers of English literature. Let's look at the next problem on our hand. We are thinking of literature in English language which is translated from other languages. We also study literature from other languages like Gujarati, from Tamil. We can also think of languages like French and German translated into English and we often study such texts in our uh, during our MA and BA courses. For One of the texts which is commonly prescribed for uh, English literature courses is The Doll's House and it was not written in English, it was only translated into English. Similarly, when we read the Gitanjali in our uh, English language classrooms, we are reading a text which was originally written in Bengali. The idea of studying English translation in our English literature courses is a new one. It is something which has come into our courses only in the last 15 or 20 years. Earlier, we would not be studying translations of Indian writings into English. But one good thing as a result of this, we get to study our own culture more closely through these translations. We no longer study a foreign language or a foreign, uh, a foreign literature as if it is something far away from us. Now, literature can bring our own culture closer to us. And interestingly, English language has a role to play in bringing our own literature closer to us. Think about Tamil literature which is accessible to a Gujarati person or a Bengali person. So, uh, English, the term English literature is extremely complicated having shades and variety of meanings uh, ranging from indications of nationality indicating a language that is English. It indicates also the region called England but it also indicates literature which is translated from other languages to English language. So what we have is a very complex and varied body of text which go under the name of English literature. And I feel that this diversity is something that is to be celebrated. And in, don't you what? think that it is in some way very like India itself? Exactly. A wide variety of people, languages, cultures, but all housed under one nation. In the same way, we have a varied body of texts all housed under the title English Literature. So we have reached a point where uh, we are able to distinguish between the two ways of using the term literature and we have also reached a point where we can talk about the term English literature and various connotations of the term English literature. Now as we proceed further in our study of English literature, the first thing that comes to our mind is the idea of genre. And interestingly when a student is asked what are you studying then usually students reply in terms of genres. We are studying poems or novels or plays. That's what we do usually. But these things, the technical term for this is genre. So let's look at the term genre closely. The next slide would be, what is genre? The word genre comes from the French, but before that Latin word for kind or class. The term is widely used to refer to a distinctive type of text. Uh, when we think of types of text in literature, some of the uh, broad uh, cl classification of the various liter uh, literary texts would be as follows. Now let's have a look at the next slide. In literature, the main genres are poetry, prose and drama. Within drama, there are further divisions such as tragedy and comedy within the category of drama and in prose you also have the distinction between short story, novel and essay. Uh, in poetry, the broad classification between epic poetry and lyric poetry. So you can see that each of these three broad uh, genres are 
subdivided and further divided into smaller and smaller category and as you study more and more literature you will find out more and more about smaller and smaller categories within these genres deep that's also interesting to keep in mind that the use of word literature with the definite article also has its own uh, classification for example you can think in terms of genres of uh, various variety of writings which is not classified as literature for example things like a letter can also be thought of as a genre itself. or sports writing right. travel writing diary writing but sometimes today the overlap between these forms of writing and the writing that you find in literature without the definite article is blurring the distinctions are falling apart and now a well written travelog can also be a part of english literature so this blurring of uh, genres is probably what shakespeare had in mind when he was making fun of all various genres of uh, drama so let's have a look at what shakespeare had to say with tongue in his cheek about the whole idea whole business of genre yeah. shakespeare refers sarcastically to the classification of uh, genres in his very famous play hamlet he talks of tragedy comedy history pastoral pastoral comical historical pastoral tragical historical tragical comical historical pastoral i think sachin what uh, shakespeare was trying to point out was that more important than a division or subdivision what is more important is what a text is trying to do what it is trying to say and how it is put together as a literary text right so genre is the term that all students of literature should keep in mind and uh, this is what you will be studying usually when you uh, reply to someone that i'm studying literature uh, you imply a literary genres very often so you can also think of uh, one of the definitions of the term literature would be in a very common way of saying in layman's language would be the study of genres which are classified as literary the other term which is also very important to us is the term called literary studies so the question that comes to our mind is why do we need to study literature because it's an important part important component of our culture and society then how should we study it and uh, in what way will we study it now these are the questions which scholars and critics have addressed for a long period of time so let's have a look at the term literary studies literary studies is an all inclusive term for the systematic study of literary texts it adds to our knowledge of literature it includes literary theory literary criticism and literary history very important term uh, word here would be the word systematic uh, and uh, that is the reason why it adds to the body of knowledge about literature now that we know why we need to study literature we should also think of how to study literature and literary studies is a term that is used for a systematic inquiry a study of literary texts yes. and i think we should uh, pay attention if we go back to the slide uh, we can see that there are three aspects to the study of literature one it is literary theory number 2 literary criticism and 3 literary history it is when so the systematic study of literature can be either or all of these three aspects yeah so let us look in greater detail at the terms like literary theory literary criticism and literary history the next slide here talks about what do we understand by the term literary criticism 
literary criticism is a reasoned and systematic discussion of literature it usually does not have the negative meaning we usually associate with the word criticism this means that uh, it, it does not mean to say that this kind of text is bad or that is not well written but rather literary criticism studies systematically and deeply what is literature so in a way when you study english literature you are learning to become a critic of english literature you are not learning to write english literature but you are learning to do literary criticism an analogy which i often give to my students is when you watch a film and uh, report to your friends about how it was uh, you might first just say i like the film or i didn't like the film i didn't like this but once you start giving reasons to that once you start explaining things once you start using a systematic kind of language to discuss uh, you, what you say that the dialogue was unnatural or the actor didn't act well the songs were rubbish it is then that you start becoming a critic exactly so criticism involves that's the meaning of the term reason that we used earlier it involves reasoning and it should be systematic these are the uh, expectations from a critical discourse another uh, analogy which i use for my student is that criticism is also a form of language that you use to talk about literature it's the way of speaking about literary text or works of art so in itself it's a form of language by this i think sachin perhaps you mean that it ha literary criticism has its own technical terms exactly technical terms with which the discussion of literature takes place is the language of literary criticism so it is important as students of literature to have familiarity with technical terms of literary criticism so when you discuss a novel you should know what the difference is between a story and a plot you should know what an atmosphere is or what a setting is so uh, it is these things it is the knowledge of these aspects which allow you to become a better literary critic now let us look at uh, various types of criticism there are many theoretical approaches to uh, literary criticism but th there are two broad uh, categories of literary criticism so let's look at the two main types of criticism here let's look at the next slide we usually contrast theory with practice that is thinking about something to actually doing something hence we can think of two types of criticism theoretical criticism which is thinking about literature and practical criticism which is about the analysis of literature so let's look at the terms theoretical criticism and practical criticism little bit more closely because as students of literature we are expected to understand the distinction between two though the distinction is not very uh, natural or normal at particular point it breaks down just because the re relationship between theory or reflection and acting or practice is always a complicated one but it's a usual it's a very useful distinction to make so let's look at the next slide which looks at both the terms little bit more closely theoretical criticism or what is understood as literary theory more generalized abstract and conceptual discussion of literature like the definition of literariness classification of various types of literature relation of literature and society literary values and so on is called literary theory so what is implied by theory here is that it's very general and at the same time it's very abstract so one of the reasons why students find it difficult to gra grapple with criticism and theoretical criticism is because it's very abstract very general and very very conceptual 
but it is also very important to uh, to uh, learn a little bit of literary theory that is because if we only studied individual texts we would never understand the relationship between texts so we would never understand the relationship between literature and our culture we would not understand the relation between literature and history so literary theory allows us to see connections between texts between literature and society literature and history so i'm afraid hard as it might be we should not and cannot get away from it uh, what it implies probably is that we are looking at the bigger picture not just the specific text so how is uh, the particular text that you are looking is related to the bigger picture and the bigger questions like what is literature or what is relate what is function of literature how does it relate to society what is uh, what is meaning of the term literature for society and its history so these are very big issues that theory usually raises and these are extremely crucial for enhanced understanding of literary text and so it's you and it's very interesting when you contrast it with yeah. practical criticism so let's have a look at the term practical, practical criticism just some information for you examples of literary theory you can see that literary theory is very very old and it took place in all parts of the world you have aristotle uh, poetics written uh, in 335 bce in greek and bharata's natyashastra of india which is uh, written perhaps in 200 bce a around there nobody exactly knows where it was written and these are